This is Centorial 2.0. It's a program that teaches you how synthesizers work and covers concepts that you can apply to any synth, whether it's a VST like Serum or an analog synthesizer. You learn all the basic functions of a synth, all the most common effects, and the role of how each one shapes the sound. It's a tool that helps teach the skills you need to quickly start designing your own sounds as opposed to depending on presets. I've finished Centorial 1.0 and I'm a big fan. It's been a, around for a while, it's very highly regarded, and there's lots of testimonials out there that speak to how effective it is as a teaching tool. Version 2.0 just came out recently and has some pretty substantial upgrades. I was also fortunate enough to both alpha and beta test version 2.0, so I've had several months to play with the new features and get accustomed to them. This really is a great learning tool. It works and there's nothing else out there like it. So let's uh, jump in, check it out, and I'll highlight how it works and um, some of the features that are new to version 2.0. So the first improvement in version 2.0, the interface is way better. I much prefer the darker theme versus the old style, and uh, probably the most important thing, you can resize the fucking window, finally, so it's actually visible on large monitors, thank god. Um, so on the left of the screen are the lesson modules that cover a different, different aspect of the synth. Um, Centorial it moves in a structured way, and you have to complete one module in, or, in order to unlock the next one. Um, each lesson module usually consists of a couple sections where you watch a video and then do a couple exercises that focus on just a specific concept that you just learned. And um, it does this by uh, playing a sound in the synth engine and then prompting you to recreate it within the um, Centorial engine here. And the custom synth that they've built for this purpose, it's a bit stripped down just to simplify it for educational purposes, but it includes all the basic functions that are in any uh, analog synthesizer. Um, at the end of each module, there's a group challenge where it gives you uh, patches that open up everything you've learned up to that point. Um, and it tests you on basically all the, not just the concept you've learned, but all the modules that you've completed up to that point. It starts simple. So in the first lesson, only the oscillator is unlocked. And literally, you're only trying to recognize the difference between a saw wave and a pulse wave. Um, but as you progress more and more features of the synth are unlocked and it gets a lot more difficult. So I think to demonstrate how this works, I'm just going to pick one of the lessons here and just dive right into it. And um, to make it a bit more interesting, I want to show one with a few features unlocked. Um, so I'm going to do lesson number 12 here, which is the uh, lesson that introduces the filter resonance. So you start off with the um, the first introduction here, which starts off with a video. Filter resonance. Our resonance works hand in hand. Now, uh, all the videos are redone for, um, yeah, I won't make you watch all this, but the video for um, version 2.0 were completely redone from version 1.0. And um, the quality of the audio and video editing in each one is just vastly improved from what it was before. Um, and then once the video is done, then you go up to this challenge area here and um, you uh, start the exercise that focuses on this concept here. So what it's going to do is um, when you hit the start button down here is it will hide the synth controls and play a sound. Or you can just play it on your MIDI keyboard yourself if you want to. And then you switch over to um, this other screen here and you set the filter cutoff and resonance to match the sound that you just heard. So obviously the cutoff comes down a bit. The cutoff sounds about right, but the resonance needs to come up. That sounds pretty close to me. Sweet. All right, so you usually do a couple of those exercises like around three or five or so. Um, and then usually within each lesson, there's a quiz. This is um, it's basically just a multiple choice test, which is, which is pretty easy. Um, and then you get to the difficult part, which is the, the group challenges. So basically what it's going to do is um, it's going to unlock everything that you've done up to this point and give you a couple patches that... Um, 
are going to introduce the concept that you just learned, a filter resonance in, in context with everything else that you've just done. So I think I'll just uh, probably do one patch here just to show what it's like. I'll just jump right in. And start. All right, sounds like a sawtooth bass sound that I've designed like a hundred times before. All right, let's try that. It's got some filter motion on it. And must have a sub oscillator. Now we're getting somewhere. So also you hear the oscillators like there's a little bit of uh, spreading or warble in them. That's because there's two of them playing and they're detuned slightly. So we can set the mix 50-50. Detune each oscillator a little bit. Let's make that louder. Yeah, there's a lot more resonance. And I think the filter envelope is slower. That's pretty close, but you got to watch out for little details. So like the, uh, I think the amplitude envelope release is a bit slower than that. I think that's pretty close. Um, one thing you can do, you can hit this question mark down there and it will basically tell you what you have right and what you have wrong so far, which can be, um, if you get stuck, it's a nice tool to have. I usually like to check my answer versus um, what the right answer is uh, just to see if, um, and then go through each one if I have something wrong, just for, try to see, try to understand why. <laughs> um, so it has two things here that are, this is also new to Centorial 2.0. I, I have these settings wrong, but um, instead of being in red to tell me that I'm a, I'm a stupid loser, they're in orange, which basically means like, like, yeah, these settings are not exactly what the patch was, but they don't really contribute much to the overall um, sound of the patch in really any meaningful way. So um, it's not going to like dock you points for getting these wrong, um, which is like, that's another new thing about Centorial 2.0, which is, um, I think, a nice feature. So I'll just go ahead and submit that. Cool. All right, so in version 2.0, you need to do three of these uh, group challenges or three patches within each group challenge before it um, lets you move on to the next module. Uh, in 1.0, you had to do six, and um, that might not seem like a big deal, but doing six of these was really kind of a chore, um, especially when you get um, deeper into Centurial and the patches get a lot more difficult and it's a lot more time-consuming to do each one. Um, so I think this change is a good thing. Um, now, the the last uh, three patches, they're still available as um, as bonus challenges. So if you hit like these three dots over there, you can launch the three extra bonus challenges. So what I'd like to do is, um, um, is to do the three challenges and then maybe come back uh, the next day or later in the week to do the bo bonus challenges later to to reinforce the concept and um, yeah, I think it helps to break it up that way. Uh, the, the end of each module also ends with a on your own, which is, um, it's just another video. And like I said, they redid all the videos in Centorial for version 2.0, um, but these, especially these on your own ones have noticeably way better content now. So. In version one, these videos were each like a minute long and they'd basically just say, hey, good job, you passed. Um, but they weren't really any more meaningful than that. Now now they actually, I've watched a few of them and they actually offer pretty solid content on um, how you'd use what you'd learned to design re real patches or to um, you know, make real sounds for real tracks. 
All right, I'm gonna try my best to do one of the final challenges again. I haven't done I haven't done these in a while, um, but I, I want to show what it's like when it opens the whole synth up. Um, so why don't I just try? Yeah, why don't I just try that? That's well, polyphonic for one. All right, it sounds like a synth wavy. Uh, Pulse, pulse wave stab thing. And um, this one's polyphonic for one. I counted five notes playing there. Uh, pulse wave. Uh, the filter cut off. There's definitely a filter envelope there. There's an amp envelope too. I think I'm getting in the general direction there. No, some of these you have to be careful of. So there's definitely some, might be doubled. Some of the things kind of sound the same, like like unison with two voices, and if you double the oscillators and detune them, um, and chorus can sometimes sound kind of the same. <laughs> so uh, I think this is, you kind of tell by how spread out it is in the stereo field. That's way too much detuning. I think that might be it, maybe. There's a bit more amplitude, amp, <clears throat> bit more release on the amp envelope. It's also not sustained with a long delay. Something's not quite right. I think filter's off. Is this a narrow pulse width? That's a lot closer, but it's still not right. Uh, Alright, it's definitely not... Envelope's definitely there, I think. Is this a... It's not a sawtooth wave, is it? Yeah, sometimes a narrow pulse width, pulse wave, and a sawtooth wave can sound very similar, especially if they're filtered heavily with a low-pass filter. Yeah, it's definitely not... I don't know. Um, let's go back to pulse wave. I would say, like, if I were using this in a song, that's close enough. But um, maybe let's check that. Uh, no, we. So it's. What's the LFO doing? Oh shit, is this pulse width modulation? It has to be pulse width modulation. Just really, really slow rate pulse width modulation. And the delay is definitely shorter. And we don't have unison. And uh, I don't think this matters. But... I think there's more filter envelope. 
No, I think the cutoff is higher. Let's try that. Something is still not right. I think the delay here is longer. No. All right, so I had the filter envelope wrong and the delay wrong. Decay wrong, sorry. Okay, it's a much longer decay, that's why. And less filter envelope. That should do it. Close enough. <laughs> yeah, so um, you can definitely see how much more difficult it gets and how much more time consuming it gets to to move through each patch. That one even wasn't particularly complicated by the standards of what it sometimes throws at you in the final challenges, but I hope that was, um, you know, somewhat informative. So there's a total of 33 of these lesson modules and um, to work your, your whole way through Centorial will, it, it, I mean, it's a bit of effort, it takes a while, but it covers a pretty broad range of topics. Um, some, of the, some of the other features I wanted to touch on are the randomizer. So you can run um, a randomizer on each lesson module if you feel like you need more challenges um, to refresh yourself on a particular topic. So basically it will just give you an infinite number of new patches to try. Um, I tried it a couple of times and it seems like it works reasonably well in that it actually does give you somewhat musical patches rather than just some like random nonsense, which uh, it couldn't have been easy to code it that way. So I guess kudos to them. Um, now the synth in Centorial is also available as a VST plugin called Primer that can uh, be used in whatever DAW you want. So the music playing in the intro of this video was made almost entirely with Primer. And honestly, I think it sounds fine. Um, the main appeal of the plugin is that I think everything, including all the common effects are all on one screen. And if you finish Centorial, then you're probably pretty adept at using it at that point. Uh, for me personally, I'm more comfortable using the synth tools that come with Ableton, like Drift or Wavetable, and Primer doesn't really offer anything that those don't have, so I'll probably never use it again. But um, since since the VST comes free with uh, Centorial, I think it's a, it's a nice addition. So if you're thinking of trying um, Centorial, I did want to touch upon some of the limitations of the program. Um, the first is it sometimes describes itself as a video game, but... Honestly, it, it really isn't that. It's it's more of a structured interactive training course, and it isn't really fun in the way that a video game is. It, it does take some commitment, and you have to give it your full attention while you're doing this, and you have to be committed to wanting to learn about sound design. Um, otherwise, you'll probably think it's pretty boring, to be honest. Um, it's also, it's not a music production course. It, it only teaches you how to make sounds. It doesn't teach you how to make tracks. So you're not going to get anything about songwriting, arrangement, mixing, music theory. It's not going to teach you how to play keys. Um, it's going to teach you sound design. And it's, sound design is a great skill to have, but it's really just one piece of creating music. And I think you should just, um, you know, have your expectations in line with what Centorial is meant to teach you. Um, the only, the other thing is it only covers uh, subtractive synthesis, so there's no West Coast synthesis or like wave folding or uh, low pass gates. It doesn't do wavetables, um, although I think that doesn't really matter that much because I think I think if you're able to finish Centorial that you'll understand what wavetable synthesis is pretty quickly, and um, again like wave folding is just another. It's just another feature like, um, you know, FM or whatever that brightens up your sound. So I think, you know, you can pick up that concept pretty easily too. Um, on the topic of FM, it, Centurial kind of does FM, but really only basic things with just uh, two operators. Uh, but to be fair, I think to really go deep into a, into how to use a full FM synth like a DX7 or like operator in Ableton or something, it would probably take many lessons. <laughs> to do that um, and I so I kind of understand why they didn't want to go there uh, obviously it also doesn't do any granular or sample based synthesis that that's really just way beyond the scope of what Centorial is trying to teach um, 
Also, it doesn't cover the technical aspects of, th of synthesis. In, in fact, it actually intentionally avoids getting into it at all. It, it really just focuses on how things sound rather than any aspect of how the internals of a synth work. So it doesn't teach things like frequency response. Um, it doesn't get into like why certain waveforms are more harm harmonically rich than others. It doesn't get into how control voltages work. Um, so you might not necessarily really need to know any of that, especially if you're just working within a DAW, but I think just knowing that stuff helps. <laughs> and, and I think it especially helps if you're interested in modular sy synthesis. I think you really need to know that stuff. So as to what Centurial does and what you can expect to get out of it, um, it really it really does work. I mean, I found the structure and hands-on format of it engaging, and I found that I got a lot out of it um, when I finished it. So I, I find now that if I have a sound in my head or one that um, I've heard in a track that I want to copy, I, I mostly can create something that's at least pretty similar nowadays. Um, also, there's a lot of times when I find a preset that I like, but it doesn't quite fit into the track quite right the way that it is. Um, and now, like, one of the skills I have is I'm able to more quickly modify presets to make them sound the way that I want. Um, I've also found that Centorial is really good at training your ear because of, you know, basically the whole time you're using it, it forces you to listen to sounds critically during all these exercises. And, um, you know, I found things like, you know, for example, learning to hear differences in filter behaviors has helped develop my ear for um, other things like EQing, uh, you know, recorded sounds or mixing. Um, so would I recommend it? Like, yes, absolutely. Um, especially now the cost is like $80 on sale or $120 at full price. Um, to put that in perspective, that's less than really any of the popular a VST synths like um, Pigments or Serum or Massive, and it's certainly like way less than paying for a full production course from you know some producer somewhere. Um, so if you want to learn about synthesis, I think this is a great tool. If you're if you're in the middle of working on Centurial 1.0 and you've already bought version 1.0, the cost of upgrading is like 20 bucks now. I think during the intro sale, and um, in my opinion, I think it's worth upgrading just for the better user interface, the better video quality, and um, the fact that you only have to finish the three patches in the group challenge now, I think is a huge thing that makes it a lot more user friendly. Um, if you're someone who's already finished Centorial, then upgrading you gets a randomizer and that you can use to give more challenges. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's worth upgrading just to get access to the new video content um, but if you think it's if you think you'll ever come back to it to try to um, revisit some of the concepts or like test your skills again then I guess it's kind of up to you to decide whether it's worth it at some point I think your time is better just spent writing music and designing sounds for real tracks but uh, again like upgrading from 1.0 is really just only 20 bucks so I think it's a bargain all right, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you want to see me do more tutorial patches and other videos, um, let me know. Um, until then, I'll catch you next time.